Welcome to Nerd Wars, and you guessed it, I have accidentally stumbled into a dark web of conspiracy. <laughs> I just wanted to make fun of people with a bunch of neo pronouns calling themselves settlers and stuff like that in their bios. And in the process, I discovered that Sweet Baby Inc. isn't just metaphorically Gamergate 2, they are literally Gamergate 2. Some of the same exact players. So how did it start? Chris Kindred of Sweet Baby Inc. attempts to cancel a Steam curator for revealing their video game projects. A concerned citizen decided to go ahead and help people not waste their money and show people what sort of game Sweet Baby Inc. had worked on so people didn't have to waste their money. So Chris Kindred, who I just assumed was a white male and not the black female in his profile picture, turns out I think he's a black man, and by that I mean a black man this is literally gamergate 2 but all the original gamergaters now they're a different gender or non-binary or queer instead of sleeping around to get to the top now they're all a bunch of non-binaries to get to the top it's weird and i just wanted to laugh at him for it but oh boy i ended up having to do research and become a games journalist <laughs> gross so christina i mean chris here was trying to harass a steam curator supposedly saying that they were a harassment group while trying to cancel and dox them through harassment. And then that's when Lego butts got involved. I didn't think a lot of it at the time. I even honestly skipped that part in my video. Little did I know. So Sweet Baby Inc. Detected was at 9,000 followers when this got screenshotted. Last I checked was at 68,000 followers. This has been getting a bunch of coverage, so it's gotta be like over 75,000. That's actually, so, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> and now has 91,000 followers. <laughs> 91,000 followers. <laughs> they times tend it. <laughs> Genius, guys. I mean, gals, I mean, it's. From here on out, I'm just going to have to refer to all these people as it's. You'll see why here shortly. Also, take note of one Maya Kramer, aka Lego Butts, of Gamergate slash Silver String Media Infamy, who is weighing in on the situation. Her involvement in Sweet Baby Inc. is unknown as of this writing, but there will be further reports once more information develops. I skipped that part. I just went straight to making fun of Christine, Kristen, Chris, Chris Kindred, Chris Kindred, who's not a white man. He is a black woman. Yes, she is a black, she is a black man. So Lego Butts pronouns they, he, but I don't know how that's possible. But now consulting Sweet Baby Inc. according to its bio. And of course works in the indie game space which is what Gamergate was all about. The crazy incestuous relationship between them all. The developers, the PR marketing people, and media, and the Game Awards. And Sweet Baby Inc. is just as incestuous. It's metaphorically Gamergate 2 and literally Gamergate 2. So Lego Buds tried to cancel this person and then got some backlash for it and then played the classic cry bully. Oh, you guys are so mean and you don't even know what you're talking about. I guess they need to defend themselves because they're completely wrong about everything Sweet Baby or any narrative team does and have no interest in finding out. I will say we do tend to give Sweet Baby Inc. a bit too much credit. A lot of it is just if you're a company willing to hire them, that shows that you're also filled with these creepy weirdo straight up Marxists. We're getting to it. They don't even try to hide that they're communist. Openly collectivists. But even if Sweet Baby Inc. has a little less influence than a lot of us have jumped to just assuming they have, it's clear they do have some impact. And that impact is enough to not want to pay $70 for a game they were involved with. Want to know more about this Lego Butts character? Check out Devonetized video. Lego Butts was connected to Zoe Quinn and Anita Sarkeesian, the two main figures of Gamergate. There's two different parts of Gamergate. It's the, the incestuous relationship between all the developers and media and awards and such. And then there was Zoe Quinn doing a fake me too on someone, getting him fired, and then he Minecrafted himself. So we knew that they were connected to Lego Butts, but I discovered they were connected to the other side of Gamergate as well. How? Oh God, I forgot I'm a games journalist now. Well, hold on, let me put my games journalism in hat on. Probably not gonna work very well with my green screen, but time to go down the rabbit hole, guys. I just wouldn't make fun of the weirdos, but no, I'm a journalist now. Silver String Media is a critically acclaimed game studio and narrative design firm. Narrative design. These people are straight up some Saul Alinsky 
community organizers. When they say narrative design, it's the same sort of euphemism as community organizer. It's just a funny way to say communist who's trying to take everything over and destroy it. So that way Western civilization goes away. So that way we have a Chinese century where they put the entire planet into a sci-fi dystopia we can never, ever escape. And then kill off billions of us. Narrative design firm. Sound like I'm going a little too far? Yeah, it probably does sound like it. Just wait. So Kami number one, Chris Kindred, man, female, I don't know. I assume female, now male, my best guess. Or we'll just go back to my original guess. He's actually a white man. But also he is definitely, or she, probably, a narrative designer, writer at Sweet Baby Inc. So it's last post from three months ago. So excited to be writing on this usual June from Sweet Baby Inc. Another on the list of things to not buy. Oh, who's the main character? Black Whammon. Well, presumably used to be Black Man, now Black Whammon. But then went farther down to four months ago. So glad to be part of this cohort. What? Weird Ghost. Today, today we celebrate the seven studios joining cohort three of Baby Ghost. What the? What? What is Baby Ghost? What is Weird Ghost? And I found them, and that's when I accidentally went down the rabbit hole. That's why I wear this for protection. They stand for community, kindness, passing it on, and telling black stories, and being queer non-binaries. Their games are weird, profound, beautiful, and political. Sweet Baby Inc. is a bunch of sweet, sweet babies whose website looks like it was designed to lure small children into an unmarked van. Sweet Baby Inc.'s making games compelling and diverse while giving marginalized talent an incredible leg up in the industry so they too can play their part in destroying AAA gaming. So I decided to check out Weird Ghost Twitter. Oh, wait, <sighs> everything's protected. And I think, I think it might be my fault. And you just wait to see what else might be my fault. Thankfully, I screenshotted this. Nothing like seizing the means of production. First gaming and then the world. We can put everyone into camps. You get a camp, you get a camp. Everyone gets re-educated through hard labor and bullets. Of course, they refer to themselves as collectivists. I think I accidentally blinked both eyes on that one. So I posted some of this stuff on my Twitter and I think I, think I might have got them to shut their website down for a day. I certainly got blocked on Twitter. I think the first person I've been blocked by. Congratulations to me. Sorry, I just got a notification from my inside source, Nikki, who fed me a lot of this and helped me understand just how deep this went, but we're getting to that. Weird Ghost, an impact fund for studios led by underrepresented founders across Canada. Weird Ghost invests in founders who want to build profitable, impact-oriented studios. Neo-Marxist-oriented studios with a long-term vision and commitment to equitable worker-centric structures. Labor camps is what they are looking for. Grants for teams who want to form a co-op. They're all about co-ops and collective stuff. They're reimagining the workplace. And by reimagining, they're just doing communes. Get studio operations up and running and get support with impact strategy. Prepares teams for further fundraising, now administered through our non-profit. So I was addicted to politics for a long time, so I missed a lot of this Gamergate stuff. I was aware of it, but missed a lot of the specifics. So a lot of the problems that are caused in politics are from the NGOs, the non-profits, and the incestuous relationship they have with the mega corpos. And a lot of the social engineering is done through those NGOs and nonprofits. It's like incestuous money laundering to social engineer us into a sci-fi dystopia. And that is what these people are doing. Turns out a lot of them sit on all these different boards or are part of these PR firms or part of these developers and stuff like that. It's all as incestuous as the original Gamergate. And this, this is all I wanted to do was make fun of these people. Weird Ghost was born from a collective communist desire to empower structurally excluded game devs or other fellow communists of color. Our ultimate goal is a funding landscape in Canada that truly supports game studios at all stages so that they can all grow and thrive. So I didn't know who this was at the time. Eileen Mary Holoka, Holowaka, Holuka, general partner. Eileen, they slash she is a queer and disabled white settler living on Treaty 1 territory in Winnipeg. <laughs> all I wanted to do was laugh about that stuff. That's all I wanted to do. They are a writer, game dev, and community organizer advocate. I didn't even remember that. Narrative designer. 
community organizer, Marxist. It's a co-founder of both Weird Ghost and Baby Ghost, with Ginny Robinson Faber down below, as well as a member of Gamma Space Collaborative Studio, Commune, Commune Studio. We'll get to that shortly. They also work as the general manager of Infinite Ammo. So the Gamergator OGs are saying, oh my God, right now, because it turns out Eileen is the sister of the guy Zoe Quinn and a bunch of other people, including the game's journalists, bullied through made up accusations of fake Me Too situation, got him fired from his job, and then he Minecrafted himself. And instead of taking the blame for driving a man to Minecraft himself, instead they said, we believe all women. He totally did it. And he just happened to like pass away. Also, when we do bring up what actually happened to him, it's your fault. You're the ones that did it to him. It wasn't us who made up these lies and got him fired and spread it throughout the media so he could never have a job again. It wasn't our fault. It was your fault for reporting on it and realizing we were really bad people and absolute liars. Liars who lied someone into Minecrafting himself. Oh, it's your guys' fault. It's not ours. And his sister, sister, is Eileen who also went along with the believe all women and then cry bullied. If anyone, if anyone says anything mean, we're going through a hard time. Yeah. When all your friends bullied your brother into minecrafting himself after getting him fired over fake me too accusations, allegedly. So weird ghost through baby ghost is helping to, I assume fund and train sweet baby Inc who has Lego butts working for them. So Sweet Baby Inc. has both sides of Gamergate connected to it. It's Gamergate 2, but now they're all different genders. The Gamergators went from destroying the indie game scene to now they're destroying AAA games through Sweet Baby Inc. Jenny, she, bigot, is a queer white settler community arts advocate and organizer and blah, blah, blah. So some of these groups, including the Gamma Space Collaborative Studio, seem to have gotten money from various Canadian governments. And now they're supporting Sweet Baby Inc. So indirectly, it seems like Sweet Baby Inc. may be getting Canadian tax dollars. But where's the other money coming from? Our single investor is Infinite Ammo Incorporated. What's that? Oh, that's the company that Alec, the guy who got bullied into Minecrafting himself over lies, it's his company and then his sister appears to have taken it over and is the general manager there now and is taking the money from her brother who she sides with the fake accusers with instead of her own it's its own brother then took his company and is now funding this which then funds people like sweet baby Inc and a bunch of other racist intersectional creeps trying to destroy everything for Marxism. Fuck. I just wanted to make fun of them. Sweet Baby Inc. is metaphorically Gamergate 2 and literally Gamergate 2. I just want to make fun of land acknowledgement. Although we refer to ourselves as a Canada wide fund, we acknowledge that we are, we now call Canada is built on unceded indigenous territory. We know that acknowledging the land is only one part of addressing settler colonialism in Canada. A lot of people know CRT, critical race theory, but originally it was just critical theory back in my day. And that was all the colonizer, this imperialist, that stuff. So when I say these people are communist, I mean it. Weird Ghost is owned by two white settlers who aim to practice uncolonization by prioritizing the support of indigenous creators, centering social impact within the games industry and creating less extractive funding models. We hope to take further measures to Deconstruct colonialism. Critical theory's slogan would basically just be deconstruct colonialism. In both our fund and the games industry as we continue to grow, using the money from the guy who got bullied through lies into being fired and then attacked in the games media, which led to him Minecrafting himself. So I had reported on this, and then when I got back later in the night, I had a DM from someone who had been in the comments and 
That's when I discovered what this was all connected to. And they said, oh, the website's down. Weird. This is what the website looked like when I went back to it. No one else had really broken this weird ghost story. As far as I can tell, as far as my source is telling me, I was the only one currently talking about it. And then I got blocked. And then their website disappeared. And then that's when I'm like, did I accidentally just do a Gamergate 2? I accidentally did a Gamergate 2. Apparently, it's actually up now. Let's try. All right, now it's back. Wonder if everything is still the same, though. So Baby Ghost was still up, so I pulled a lot of that up. It's like, no, they didn't pull the website down just because of you. Well, it turns out that second person, the she, not the they slash she, just the normal she, well, normal she, is a web developer who created the website. So it would actually be pretty easy for them to take it offline to make sure there wasn't anything they needed to take off. I think I got them to delete their website for a day, allegedly. So more on the Minecrafting from Polygon. One of the people who drove this man to Minecraft himself, Night in the Woods Studio, cuts ties with the designer after abuse allegations. Indie developer Zoe Quinn alleges assault and abuse from developer Alec Holyoke. This is why he Minecrafted himself. He got fired because of the lies and then the media ran it so he's never going to be able to have a job in games again. So he Minecrafted himself. And then they jujitsu around with their crazy projection. They accuse you of what they are doing. Somehow they blamed us for him doing it, when obviously it was because of this. IGN, Night in the Woods developer Alec Hollywicka dies. That's how they kept saying, oh, he died, he passed away. There was a little accident. When it should read, any developers and games media like us at IGN drove this man to Minecraft himself over lies. But instead it's, he died. You know, like how Ilhan Omar says 9-11 that something happened. And who was part of the, oh, he just passed away crowd? Eileen, his sister, who then took his company and used it to fund Baby Ghost, who then is funding and helping with stuff. I Something like that, I can, I will get to it. Sweet Baby Inc. And then this is on Medium, Death of a Game Developer. One year ago, Alec Hulerle Minecrafted himself. Here's the full story. And even here, even here, they're like, yeah, Zoe Quinn presumably made all of it up. Maybe she didn't, but she probably did. And anyone who could see that, they, they were blamed for him Minecrafting himself. Not the fake me too accusation. We got blamed for it for seeing it was lies. And then Eileen, the sisters all, oh no, it's so bad. You can't talk about it. Harassment, harassment. For Alec, thoughts on transformative justice from Eileen, which of course starts with a trigger warning about Minecrafting. Let me start by making something very clear. I do not support the harassment of anyone ever. I imagine this post will be used and butchered and repeated as a means to harass people, make politically motivated statements. We would never make politically motivated statements. I ask that anyone inclined to do so carefully consider whether the story is actually yours to take up. What do your words offer the people left mourning and surviving? They bullied its brother into minecrafting itself through lies. And it's worried about how the people who just got a man to minecraft himself are going to feel. You're not allowed to talk about this. This is a question that has been spinning in my mind since the day that Alec died. He didn't die, he minecrafted himself because of all of your friends making up lies after sleeping around the entire industry. And then just a few years later, now they've moved from indie games to destroying AAA games. And indie games as well. So Jenny, the other person at Baby Ghost, this is poorly designed. A lot of her websites do actually look pretty good. And web work right here. Created Weird Ghost and Baby Ghosts down right here at the bottom. So it'd be pretty easy that if they needed to put the website down for a day so they could scrub through it and make sure everything was all good, it'd be pretty easy. I think I got them to delete their website for a day. <laughs> what else does she work on? Damage Labs. With support from collaborators at DMG, I designed and delivered the inaugural Damage Labs Studio Startup Program with mentorship through the Government of Canada's Investment Readiness Program. And then the Toronto Media Arts Organization, a 40,000 square foot media arts center built and run by our community. It's a project that dates back to the 90s. 
blah, 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 continuity of our small collectives in the communities we serve, gentrified. And then in 2020, the city said, nah, get up out of here. And they're going to hold them to account for their mishandling of this community benefit and their intransigence in dealing with us. So Damage Toronto co-founded this video game arts nonprofit for gender marginalized folks interested in creating games. No, why? Stop it. Get some help. Gamma Space, a care-centered, values-based, inclusive, and amazing community for indie game devs. This is the commune. This is the game developer office commune, if I'm not mistaken. And then the worst website of them all, Henry Faber, which seems to be a relative, maybe a husband, is also part of all of this crap, including Gamma Space Collaborative Studio. Because it's one giant incestuous relationship. Gamma Space, we are a cooperative studio of game developers, artists, and creative technologists dedicated to exploring community-led flows of individual and collective support. Impact investor to Weird Ghost and Gamma Space have teamed up to offer a grant of 25k in a two-part six-month program of tailored mentorship with a community of game making peers, which includes Sweet Baby Inc. Cohorts in 2022 and 2023 were also supported by the Ontario Creates Capacity Development Program. I believe you mean to say supported by the Canadian taxpayer. Anti-oppression and decolonization framework. Brought to you by the Canadian taxpayer. Our goal is to dismantle power and privilege and mitigate systemic inequalities for those most affected by oppression and colonization while investing in both personal growth and collective well-being. Communists. Their code of conduct. We do not tolerate oppressive behavior, harassment, destructive behavior, or exclusionary actions. Oppressive behavior. Any conduct that demeans, marginalizes, rejects, threatens, or harms anyone on the basis of identity, background, or ability. I think you guys have a lot of ability at destroying indie games and AAA games. Harassment, deliberate intimidation, stalking, following, harassing photography or recording, disruption of events, aggressive, derogatory, or threatening comments, and unwanted physical contact or sexual attention. They accuse you of what they are doing. This literally sounds like all the gamer gators right here. <laughs> Diversity and inclusive statement. We are committed not only to including marginalized voices and bodies, like putting random black girls into God of War Ragnarok for some reason, but also to actively fighting racism, sexism, and oppression in all its forms, unless that oppression is against straight white men. Territorial acknowledgement, we're a bunch of evil colonizers. So with support from Infinite Ammo, you know, the guy who Minecrafted himself? Oh yeah, his company. Gamma Space, that's who we were just talking about. That's one of their partners. But with support also from Clever... Endeavor, which is the people who make Ultimate Chicken Horse. Some of these indie games are actually good games. We are diverse and honor every person's experiences in every aspect of their identity. We help to improve our industry by fighting to improve the lives of developers of typically marginalized groups in our industry. And a land acknowledgement. Jesus Christ. And pronouns in all the bios. All They're all he, hims, she, hers, he, hims. There's not a single weirdo and that they still have to put it. The only people who should have to put it are the weirdos with the weird pronouns. Equity, diversity, and inclusion. So the program timeline, this was the thing that Sweet Baby Inc. is now a part of. And that was like four months ago. So at stage one, month one and two, they get 5,000 bucks. Then they have a self-assessment at the conclusion of stage one. Collective evaluation. And then stage two, that's months three or six, which is where presumably Sweet Baby Inc. is at, if that actually happened, financial support 20K with support from Infinite Ammo. The guy who was lied about and got bullied into Minecrafting himself is now funding Sweet Baby Inc. indirectly. This isn't just metaphorically Gamergate 2, it's literally Gamergate 2. The incestuous relationship has just gotten even incestuouser. But now, all of the major players from Gamergate are now a different gender. So who else was part of the Sweet Baby Inc. cohort for Baby Ghost? Cozy Comet Games. Cozy Comet is co-founded by persons of marginalized genders and race and is grateful to live, work, and celebrate on Treaty 6 in Metis Region 4 territory. Stop it. Get some help. Our team is made up of diverse people who each bring something incredible to the game, all while achieving gender parity. Turns out we got rid of the gender pay gap by just turning all the women into men and men into women. 
Our games are designed to resonate with folks from multiple backgrounds and levels of expertise. There are many underserved communities that enjoy gaming. Yeah, the normal gamer community, we've been quite underserved these days. Our studio strives to make games that appeal to as many people as possible, assuming they're not straight white men. Diaspora games. Representation matters. Game content and creators of color are severely underrepresented in the game industry. Honestly, I think we could do a lot more to underrepresent them more, and then maybe we could take the game industry back and it could be good again. Despite the fact that black and Latinx, Latinx people play games at higher rates than others. This is why it's important for us to educate the next generation of game developers into Marxism, work to expand and diversify the game community for some reason, and provide resources geared towards developers of the diaspora. Our games provide BIPOC gamers with digital experiences that matter by choosing to tell stories about BIPOC individuals and communities. For a modern gaming audience. So the original Gamer Gators, they're the ones that said, Oh, gamers are evil, sexist, misogynist, and they hate women in gaming. Everything is sexist, everything is racist, everything is homophobic, and you have to point it all out. They got exposed for all of it, they changed their genders, and now they're the ones responsible for saying, gamers are a bunch of evil racists, we need to have more marginalized people in gaming. Fucking current day Californian shit! Cause that's all we fucking know! Cause we're boring! We're so fucking boring! Same people. Same exact people. Just different genders now. Sweet Baby Inc. isn't just Gamergate 2 metaphorically, which it most certainly it is. It is literally Gamergate 2. These people failed upwards yet again and they are scamming the canadian taxpayer out of their money and they are convincing these crazy ass game developers to also give them money it's not just their fault it's an incestuous relationship people just like them are also in the companies so if those people convince them to hire someone like sweet baby inc you already know it's going to be woke they're going to focus on all this inclusion crap instead of giving you a good game so even though sweet baby inc might not be directly responsible for a lot of the crap it's this giant incestuous group of a bunch of commies they they are responsible for it so you know if they hire someone like sweet baby inc there's a bunch of commies involved it's this crazy incestuous group trying to call all of us gamers a bunch of sexist racists you can't keep getting away with it! And you know, you know they're going to make a bad game because they're going to be more focused on their social engineering than just giving the gamers what they want. So what do you think about this? How many prizes should I win? A Pulitzer at least? What sort of gaming journalism awards are out there? I want to win one of those. Who do I have to sleep with to make that happen? He's out of line, but he's right. Preferably a she slash her if possible. How dare you? Once your mind recovers from being blown, please, please like and subscribe and do all that comment thing down below so I can continue my hard-hitting gaming journalism. Gaming journalism. <coughs> Gross. Peter, I need you to hold my ears. Get access to exclusive videos and become a producer of my Subscribestar. Links in the description.